If you're just finding this video and you have not seen part one, click off of this video and go watch part one. That'll provide all the context you need for this video. Today we are going to be continuing our deep dive into everything the Dukes of Hazard has grown into throughout the last 45 years since the first episode aired on CBS. And throughout this video we're going to be talking with John Schneider, Bo Duke himself, and getting his input on some of the stuff that's happened throughout the last 45 years. So be sure to leave a like and also subscribe to my YouTube channel for plenty more Dukes of Hazard content like this, because trust me, there is a lot of Dukes of Hazard content all over this channel. Also, my full 30-minute interview with John Schneider is out now on YouTube. That will also be linked in the description if you'd like to go check it out. We talked about a lot of really cool stuff. I think you guys would dig it. If you'd like to support me as a video creator, my website is ChunkyMonkey40.com. On there, I have a lot of Dukes of Hazard merchandise, and then there's also die-cast cars, Funko Pops, tons of cool stuff. Every single purchase goes directly to me and helps me make videos like this. In part one, we left off talking about the 1999 Dukes convention that took place at the original Boar's Nest filming location down in Covington, Georgia. In attendance at that event was a couple hundred Dukes of Hazard fans and several cast members including Crazy Cooter. It is very likely that after attending the 1999 Dukes convention, Ben Jones saw the potential for fan and cast gatherings and it planted a seed in his mind for the next chapter of the Dukes of Hazard. The Dukes of Hazzard reunion movie got enough good feedback that CBS and Warner Brothers brought the cast back again for a second reunion movie. This one was Hazard in Hollywood, which was released on May 19, 2000. This film would mark the last installment to the Dukes of Hazard franchise that would include the original cast from the TV show. Okay, so we did the Dukes Go to Hollywood. So we did that movie and uh, it kind of got into creative arguments with everybody because as written, it was more like the Beverly Hillbillies uh, than the Dukes of Hazard. So they had us coming to Hollywood and being really idiots, you know, starting a fire into the Hollywood sign and... and, oh, and uh, <laughs> Yeah, it was dumb. So, which we did, but uh, but but Tom and I both Tom and I both said, look, we, we're we're not, you know, we're looking for Enos. The the conceit was we were trying to find Enos. So, okay, well, let's build a fire. Let's make sure the audience knows we built the fire so that Enos would find us, not because we're stupid. You know, we're not hillbillies. We're not. We're not. And I love the Beverly Hillbillies, but we were not a fish out of water when we went into the city. In fact, in Daisy's song, Uncle Jesse says to us, now boys, when you go into the city, I want you to make sure you don't take unfair advantage of those city folk because they don't know no better. <laughs> I remember and that line. We had to, uh, to keep up the banner, to keep up the, uh, the legacy of what the Dukes of Hazard really was. And we did. I think that show was that show was pretty good. I mean, it wasn't certainly wasn't uh, the ghost of General Lee or Carnival of Thrills, but it was it was it was good. It was watchable. Just like the first reunion movie, this one didn't necessarily break any new ground. However, again, it just satisfied the fans of the original show. And I personally, I love this movie. I thought it was super cool to see the General Lee jump in a more suburban environment, and it was also pretty cool to see Toby Keith make a cameo in the movie as well. Oh, I hate to interrupt this video with a bit of very heartbreaking news. Today is February 5th, 2024, and the news has just broken that Toby Keith has actually passed away following a courageous battle with stomach cancer. Toby Keith was one of the biggest country music stars of all time. He had over 32 number one songs and over 40 million albums sold. His breakout single being Should Have Been a Cowboy. He has plenty of other hits including How Do You Like Me Now, which is the song that he performed at the end of the Hazard and Hollywood reunion movie, Red Solo Cup, I Love This Bar, and Courtesy of the Red, White, and Blue. Recently, last fall, Toby Keith was honored at the People's Choice Awards where he performed a song that he wrote called Don't Let the Old Man In, and the song was inspired by something Clint Eastwood told him on the golf course one day. In fact, Clint Eastwood loved the song so much that he used it at the end of his most recent film, The Mule. Toby Keith was a legend in country music and he will never be forgotten. To everyone out there, raise your red solo cups up high in honor of the big dog, Toby Keith. May he rest in peace. Hey. 
Hazard in Hollywood caused yet another resurgence in the popularity of the Dukes of Hazard. At the time, Warner Brothers was still selling the merchandise and it was still flying off the shelves like hotcakes. And between the merchandise and the reruns still airing on the Nashville network, Hazard County was only getting bigger. In 2001, Cooter's Place in Sperryville, Virginia was gearing up for a very big event, Duke's Fest. Ben Jones and his wife Alma were planning to host the event in a field behind the store. Duke's Fest was going to include both a car show and a meet and greet with some of the cast members including Byron Cherry who played Coy Duke, Sonny Schroyer who played Deputy Enos Strait, Don Pedro Coley who played Sheriff Little, Rick Hurst who played Deputy Cletus Hogg, James Best who played Sheriff Roscoe Coltrane, and of course Ben Jones' crazy cooter was in attendance as well. The event brought out hundreds of fans, a dozen or so General Lee replicas alongside several cars from the show. Most notably was Lee One, which had just been rediscovered by Gary Schneider on August 12th, 2001, and you're actually seeing some of his photos right now on screen from the event. But all in all, Duke's Fest 2001 was essentially just a more organized version of what we saw in 1999 with the Dukes of Hazard fan club, only this was on a larger scale. For the most part, Duke's Fest 2001 laid out the template for the future of all Dukes of Hazard events. Because yeah, spoiler alert, this was only the beginning. <laughs> what began as a relatively modest collection of General Lees, fans, and attending cast members quickly grew into an attraction of epic proportion. In 2002, Cooter's Place had been doing so well that they actually opened up a second location in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. This was Cooter's in the Smokies, and it was open until 2009, which is when they relocated it to the main parkway in Gatlinburg. The 2009 location would include both mini golf and indoor go-karting, plus also the typical massive collection of Dukes of Hazard memorabilia and props. But it was 2003 when the Hazard County stunt team first reunited to start putting some of the cars back in the air. Dukes Fest 2003 was bringing in the Hazard stunt team to perform two epic car stunts in front of a live audience. Both stunts were going to be rollover stunts. One of them was going to be in a Chickasaw County police car and the other one was going to be in a Hazard County police car. And the fans absolutely loved it. A month later, some fans had come together to organize another Dukes of Hazard event that was to be held down in Covington, Georgia. This one was to celebrate the show's upcoming 25th anniversary, and the event was significant for two reasons. Reason one, it was the first event that Rich Sefton, who was one of the mechanics who worked alongside Tom Sarmento building cars for the Dukes of Hazard TV show, this was the first event that Rich Sefton was ever able to bring his General Lee wheel standard to. He had lost the car in a divorce back in 1989, and the car had went missing for a lot of years, so it was pretty cool that he was able to bring it out for the 25th anniversary of the show. If you want to learn more about the stand-up General Lee, you're in luck, because I actually made a full documentary going over the history of the car. It is called The Complete Story of the Stand-Up General Lee. It is out on YouTube. You can watch it for free. I'll leave a link to it in the description. But the other reason the 25th anniversary was significant was because it marked the first time the General Lee had been jumped for a crowd at a Dukes of Hazard event. James Smith and his brother Bob built the car used in the stunt show, and Corey Eubanks, one of the stunt drivers from the original TV show, he had the opportunity to jump it. Now the landing was a little rough to say the least, but it was super cool for the fans to see the General Lee fly in person for the very first time. Now by 2004, these Dukes of Hazard events were just getting a little bit too big to be held in a small field behind Cooter's place. And so for the next Dukes Fest, he managed to rent out Bristol Motor Speedway for the weekend. Dukes Fest 2004 had a car show, drag racing, live music, and the Hazard County stunt team also did three massive car stunts. They turned over a bad guy car, a Roscoe cop car, and at the end of it all, Corey Eubanks jumped the General Lee over 150 feet. And this jump was awesome to say the least, especially when compared to the jump at the 25th anniversary. The landing on this one went a lot more smoothly. Over 25 years after the first episode had aired, the Dukes of Hazard was only getting bigger and it showed no sign of slowing down anytime soon. 2005 was a big year for the Dukes of Hazard. 
On January 14th, 2005, CMT announced that they were bringing back the Dukes of Hazard for an All Dukes weekend starting Friday, February 25th. And this marked a major revival of the Dukes of Hazard on TV. Warner Bros. had licensed the show to CMT for the reruns to be shown in a regular weeknight time slot. And being that CMT is the center of all things country music, the Dukes of Hazard was the perfect show to draw in even more of their target audience to watch the station every night. Now I personally have memories watching the Dukes of Hazard on TV with my brother, my mom, my dad. Now granted the memories probably weren't from 2005, they were probably more so 2007, 8, 9, because I would have only been three years old back in 2005. But I still remember us in the living room watching the Dukes of Hazard on that big box Toshiba flat screen we had. My parents would be on the couch, me and my brother would be on the ground playing with our toy cars, or in 2005 we had this car. This is the one with the... Shit, I remember going to the store and hitting all the buttons, you know? Get all the cars doing it at once. It was a lot of fun. Man, those were the good old days. <laughs> anyway. Around the same time that CMT had acquired the rights to the Dukes, Ben Jones was in the process of relocating the Sperryville Cooters place to Nashville, Tennessee. This location would be right around the corner from the Grand Ole Opry. But the main big thing in 2005 that had the fans excited was the rumored Dukes of Hazard movie that was in production. Everyone thought the first trailer would air during the 2005 Super Bowl, but unfortunately it didn't come out until two months later in April. And upon the trailer's release, there was a lot of mixed feelings about the movie. Now in general, there was a lot of folks who were actually very excited for the movie for a lot of reasons. It starred a lot of very well-known comedy actors including Johnny Knoxville as Luke Duke, Sean William Scott as Bo Duke, Jessica Simpson as Daisy Duke, Willie Nelson as Uncle Jesse, and Burt Reynolds as Boss Hawk. And the trailer looked great for what it was. It showed those epic car chase scenes that fans love so much from the original show, only it was directed in such a more modern way. It looked really cool. But this movie was missing something. It didn't have that Dukes of Hazard feel to it. You see, the Dukes of Hazard was a clean show, and the folks who made it took pride in the fact that their show was so family friendly. But this movie was the total opposite of that. It had Uncle Jesse smoking weed and swearing. The movie over-sexualized Daisy, and it painted Bo and Luke as a bunch of stupid hicks. The people who grew up on the original TV show were pissed, and so was the original cast. Prior to the movie's scheduled release of August 5th, 2005, Ben Jones took to the Cooter's Place website and stated, What bothers me is the profanity-laced script with blatant sexual situations that mocks the good, clean, family values of our series. Rather than honoring our legendary show, they have chosen to degrade it. Frankly, I think the whole project shows an arrogant disrespect for our show. Unless they clean it up before the August 5th release date, I would strongly recommend that the True Blue Dukes fans hold their noses and pass this one up. And whatever you do, don't take any youngsters to go and see it. As plain as I can put it, the only thing this movie shares with our show is the title. When CMT brought our series back on the air in February of this year, 23 million viewers tuned in on that first weekend. Very few, if any, movies have ever matched those kinds of numbers for an opening weekend. Our show is a hit right now. Very young children have fallen in love with the Dukes on CMT, just as their parents did 25 years ago. They love the positive values of our show, its wholesome friendliness, and the fact that Bo and Luke are the heroes who always make the right moral choice. CMT is getting record ratings and the kids of America think it's a new show. In our business, it doesn't get much better than that. Which actually, yeah. speaking of the world losing their minds, I think that could have started around 2005 and 2007 when they revisited the Dukes of Hazard in the form of Jackass 2 and Jackass 3, aka the 2005 and 7 movies. <laughs> it would have to be better to suck. Both of them. Oh, I'm glad Bert was in there. You know, Bert was in there because he wanted to have somebody who really cared about the source material involved. So I love Bert. He was too thin to be Boss Hogg, though. I think John Goodman would have been a better uh, a better choice. But God bless Bert Reynolds. He was there because he wanted to honor the Dukes of Hazzard. But they were terrible. They were irreverent. Both those shows, the one on ABC Family, which which irreverent, the prequel, was uh, it, nothing at all like the Dukes of Hazzard. Um, in fact, I went to the premiere of the Dukes of Hazard, the movie, and both Johnny and uh, and Sean 
found me in the crowd and, and the first thing they said was, we're so sorry. Huh. <laughs> they apologized. Yeah, it was terrible. And uh, you know, Willie Nelson, hazard. Willie Nelson playing, uh, playing Boss Hog. I'm sorry, Willie Nelson playing Uncle Jesse is a lecherous old drunk. Really, really aggravated me. Yeah, that that was not Uncle Jesse. That really, in my eyes, no. it was not the Dukes of Hazard. It was a Saturday Night Live skit that made a feature film. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think uh, I think Jeff Foxworthy's uh, politically correct. <laughs> Dukes of Hazard is better than that whole movie. Oh man, that's I totally forgot about that. Larry the Cable Guy. Oh, it's great. That. Oh, that, that one's legendary. <laughs> In an effort to try promoting the movie, MTV's Your Movie Show had teamed up with the Hazard County stunt team to perform a tribute stunt jump at the exact same spot that the General Lee was jumped for the very first time. It was right outside of Sceney Hall at the Oxford College down in Covington, Georgia. The original Lee One jump took place on November 11th, 1978, and the car flew 81 feet. This reenactment jump was performed by Corey Eubanks, and he sailed 133 feet in the air before finally touching down. And there was a massive crowd of bystanders there watching as Corey recreated the jump of the very first General Lee. The Dukes of Hazard Your Movie Show Special aired on July 27th during primetime on MTV, and the episode was focused around not only the origins of the original TV show, but it was also focused on promoting the 2005 movie. And fun fact, the cop car that Corey jumped over belonged to a fella from Ohio named Raymond Kahn. Remember that name, he's gonna come in later on in the video. Upon the movie's release on August 5th, 2005, the movie grossed only $30 million and was met with generally negative reviews from both critics and fans from all over the world. Today, the movie's overall rating, according to IMDb, is 5.1, which is two points lower than the TV show's 7.1 rating. Now, even though the movie was a flop for the most part, people still were huge fans of the show, largely in part due to CMT's nightly reruns of the hit show. When it came time for Duke's Fest 2005, CMT decided they'd team up with Ben Jones to help put the festival on. It was held at the Bristol Motor Speedway again, only this time it would be quadruple the size. The two-day event was held on June 4th and 5th, and the weekend consisted of the typical meet and greets with all the cast members and crew from the show, music performances by Shooter Jennings, John Schneider, and Cooter's Garage Band. Then there was also drag racing, the General Lee car show, and five major stunts. Rolling a white pickup truck, a cop car, Kit from Knight Rider, then they flipped Roscoe's cop car through a massive box truck and ended the entire event with jumping the General Lee over Roscoe's crashed cop car. It was wild. CMT would continue to host Duke's Fest in both 2006 and 2007, only they moved it to the center of country music, Nashville, Tennessee. Duke's Fest 2006 was definitely the peak of the events. It was held at the Nashville Motor Speedway on June 3rd and 4th. They kicked the weekend off with John Schneider and Tom Wopat actually hosting a concert at the Grand Ole Opry, where at the end they were joined by some of their Dukes of Hazzard co-stars during their performance of the Dukes of Hazzard's theme song, Good Old Boys. The event itself was packed full. They had everything you could think of. They were giving rides around the racetrack in the General Lee. It had a demolition derby and lawnmower racing. Jesse Coulter performed there alongside, of course, John Schneider and Tom Wopat. They also did a massive General Lee parade all around the speedway. And then there was the stunt show. The Hazard County stunt team did a wild turnover in a cop car that <laughs> definitely left a mark on the raceway. But the big stunt jump was at the end with the General Lee. It was a whopping 202 foot long jump and it broke the world record for the longest asphalt to asphalt jump. Dukes Fest 2006 was massive and it set a record for being the biggest Dukes of Hazard event. It brought in over 100,000 people to Nashville and there was over 100 General Lee replicas in attendance and man, it would have been a sight to see. Dukes Fest 2006 was definitely the peak of the Dukes of Hazard. And with the success of Dukes Fest in 2006, of course they planned on doing it again the next year.
On March 4, 2007, the world was given the last official installment to the Dukes of Hazard franchise by Warner Brothers. This was the Dukes of Hazard: The Beginning. And the Dukes of Hazard: The Beginning is a made-for-television buddy comedy film, and it was set to be a prequel to the 2005 movie. And if you thought that one was bad, this one was 100 times worse. The movie starred only really two people worth mentioning. You got Shooter McGavin from Happy Gilmore playing Boss Hog, and then you got Willie Nelson who reprised his role from the 2005 movie as Uncle Jesse. Other than that, I highly doubt you'll recognize anybody on this cast list. Now I can make a whole video roasting this disaster of a film, but it's honestly just not even worth talking about, especially in this video. This is a tribute to the original show. Just like the 2005 movie, this one also made a mockery of the original show and absolutely shit on the legacy of the Dukes of Hazzard. It was a major flop, so much so that it is actually the lowest rated installment into the entire Dukes of Hazzard franchise. It sits at a whopping 4.4 rating on IMDb, and the only good the thing I could really say about this film is that April Scott looked pretty hot in that Daisy Duke costume. Just saying. Duke's Fest 2007 was held at the exact same speedway as it was in 2006, and it would also be the last Duke's Fest co-hosted by CMT. 2007 was kicked off with the firing of a Civil War cannon, and then after that they did three major car stunts. One of them was a turnover in the Carnival of Thrills car. <laughs> Then they jumped Roscoe's cop car into an RV. And then they ended the show with jumping the General Lee over, well, the RV that Roscoe jumped into and also John Schneider's Harley Davidson. <laughs> But unfortunately, Duke's Fest 2007 had a slightly lower attendance rate than 2006. Now this was most likely due to the rising gas prices during this time. But Duke's Fest 2007 was still estimated to have had around 60 to 70,000 people there, which honestly is still huge for a 28 year old TV show. But due to the lower attendance rate in 2007, CMT dropped the event after having been the co-hosts of Duke's Fest alongside Ben Jones for the last three years. When it came time to plan Duke's Fest 2008, Ben Jones ended up transferring the rights to the Duke's Fest name to John Schneider, as Ben was facing spine surgery that year and was unable to commit to future Duke's Fest at that time, but he also desired to see the event continue. In 2008, John Schneider moved Duke's Fest down to the Atlanta Motor Speedway. John Schneider kept many of the same aspects of Duke's Fest, including the General Lee Parade, autograph signings, lawnmower racing, and it of course featured the Hazard County Stunt Show where they jumped a Roscoe police car. <laughs> rolled a Chickasaw County police car, <laughs> and they jumped a General Lee. For Duke's Fest 2008, John Schneider had also brought in quite a few sponsors, including Hooters, Zaxby's, and Dodge. Every cast member was there, including Ben Jones. He had recovered well enough from his surgery to come to the event, and overall, it was an awesome event. But there was one uncontrollable factor. Much like many other events in 2008, Duke's Fest also suffered from a very low attendance rate due to it taking place at the peak of the 2008 recession. And plus, without CMT backing the event and promoting it on TV every single day, this also made it very hard to bring people into the event. And so 2008 marked the very last usage of the Duke's Fest name. The days of Duke's Fest was what some could refer to as the glory days of the Dukes of Hazard franchise. But there was still one aspect to it all that would never die down, and that is both the fans and their love for the show. In the late 2000s, the Dukes of Hazard fans began taking an initiative to start hosting their own Dukes of Hazard events. In 2007, a guy by the name of Raymond Kahn pursued his dream of one day being able to jump the General Lee. 
Him and some friends created the Northeast Ohio Dukes in 2007, and as of 2024, he has actually jumped the General Lee 25 times. Another fan by the name of John Holland, also known as the Dukes of Hazard historian, he opened a museum of all things Dukes of Hazard in 2005. Based in Williamsburg, Virginia, as of 2024, he has one of, if not the biggest, private collection of both props and memorabilia from the Dukes of Hazard TV show. John has everything from episode scripts and, you know what, just tons of other stuff that was screen used. Bows and arrows. He's got one of Boss Hogg's hats. He's got that portrait of Boss Hogg that used to hang, I believe, in Boss Hogg's bank. And if you'd like to see it for yourself, you can schedule a visit with the Dukes of Hazard museum and collectibles by contacting their Facebook page. It's up on the screen. And in fact, there is another private museum that opened during this period, and that is the Boar's Nest. In 2012, a guy by the name of Tracy Duke had begun putting together a collection of Dukes of Hazard memorabilia, and all the while he built this really cool replica of the Boar's Nest. And inside the Boar's Nest, he built several cool replica sets, including Boss Hog's office and Cooter's garage. You can schedule a visit to the museum by messaging the Facebook page, Boar's Nest, a Dukes of Hazard museum. When the economy began to bounce back in 2011, Ben Jones began easing his way into doing some Dukes events. Granted, these were on a much smaller scale than Dukes Fest, but they were still super cool. These were called Hazard Homecoming, and the first one was scheduled for August 13th and 14th in Sperryville, Virginia. Now, because of the fact that there was no longer a Cooter's Place location in Sperryville, this event would be held at the Thornton Hill Hounds Raceway. Featured at the event was Catherine Bach, John Schneider, James Best, Sonny Schroyer, Rick Hurst, Byron Cherry, and Ben Jones, of course. Hazard Homecoming was very similar to the 2001 Dukes Fest, just a small fan gathering in the Virginia countryside. They would continue putting on smaller events through the next few years and would alternate between which cast members appeared when. But besides that though, the Dukes of Hazard honestly stayed pretty quiet for the most part. Reruns of the show continued to stay very consistent on CMT, merchandise was still flying off shelves at stores, Ben Jones continued running the two Cooters Place locations in Tennessee, and the Northeast Ohio Dukes had pretty much taken on the stunt show aspect of Dukes Fest. But in 2014, CMT made an announcement. They had said that they went through and remastered all 147 episodes of the Dukes of Hazard in HD, and they had announced that they had plans to relaunch the series with a huge marathon. And this created yet another surge in the Dukes of Hazard's popularity. And shortly after that, in June of 2014, John Schneider and Tom Wopat unofficially reprised their roles as Bo and Luke Duke for an Auto Trader commercial. The commercial went viral almost immediately, and in the commercial, we saw the Duke boys struggling to run from the cops, and in the end, they ended up rolling up to a dealership, and sadly, they traded in the General Lee for an orange Dodge Viper that had an 01 on the door. Now, fans were ecstatic about this commercial. It was so cool seeing the Duke boys back together in the General Lee, but the only criticism about the commercial was the simple fact that the Duke boys would have never traded in the General Lee for anything. Now, between both CMT having remastered all the episodes in HD and also the rising popularity of the Auto Trader commercial, things were looking out extremely well for the Dukes of Hazard franchise. Younger folks were being exposed to the show each day, and merchandise was still continuing to fly off the shelves at stores, Cooter's Place was becoming more and more popular, and at this point, the future was quite bright for the Dukes of Hazard. But then, the world went crazy. 2015 was a very tough year for the Dukes of Hazard, and the franchise took three very hard hits. The first one was on April 6th, 2015, when James Best passed away at the age of 88 in Hickory, North Carolina from complications of pneumonia, and this devastated the Dukes of Hazzard fan base. Over the last 15 years of Dukes of Hazzard events, so many fans had developed a personal relationship with James Best. A relationship that was so much deeper than him just having been a goofy sheriff on television. 
And as if things couldn't get any worse for the Dukes of Hazard following the passing of Sheriff Roscoe, the Dukes of Hazard was pulled into the political discussions about the rebel flag following the Charleston Church shooting on June 17, 2015. The shooting was conducted by a piece of shit white supremacist by the name of Dylan Roof, who walked into a church and shot and killed nine people of color and also injured one person. Within hours of the shooting, some photos had surfaced of Dylan Roof posing with a rebel flag and a pistol began circulating all over the internet and on news stations all over the country. And following the Charleston shooting, it was South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley who initially called for the removal of all Confederate imagery from the state capitol and surrounding areas. It wasn't but a week after the shooting, and Rhino Governor Nikki Haley was signing a bill banning the display of the rebel flag on Capitol grounds, alongside calling for the removal of Confederate monuments, and it only snowballed from there. On June 14th, 2015, Warner Brothers issued a public statement that they would be revoking any and all licensing for Dukes of Hazard memorabilia that contained the rebel flag in the wake of the Charleston Church shooting, including their top selling 118th and 164th General Lee diecast cars made by Auto World and Ertl. But all of this wasn't enough for the critics in the liberal media. And on July 1st, 2015, TV Land announced that all reruns of the Dukes of Hazard TV show were canceled indefinitely due to the controversy of the rebel flag. Pains me to even say it, I remember when they did this, that sucked. Cast members from the Dukes of Hazard were very quick to defend the show, including John Schneider, Tom Wopat, and Ben Jones. John Schneider spoke with The Hollywood Reporter and said, The Dukes of Hazard was and is no more a show seated in racism than Breaking Bad was a show seated in reality. I am saddened that one angry and misguided individual can cause one of the most beloved television shows in the history of the medium to suddenly be seen in this light. Are people who grew up watching the show now suddenly racists? Will they have to go through a detox and a 12-step program to kick their Duke's habit? Hi, my name is John and I'm a Dukesaholic. I'm kidding, of course, but has it really come to this? Come on, TV land. Can't we all just watch TV? Throwing this particular baby out with the bathwater seems reactionary and overly PC to me. If the flag was a symbol of racism, then Bo and Luke and Daisy and Uncle Jesse were a pack of wild racists, and that could not be further from the truth. And Tom Wopat did a video interview where he said, The road from that guy in South Carolina to the General Lee is a very long road. There's a lot of steps in between. When they came up with the design for the car, they had nothing like that in mind, of course. The show never had any racist overtones or anything like that. Our show was about family values and people helping each other and doing the honest thing. So it's really unfortunate that things have come down like they have. As far as the TV land thing, you know, them pulling the show, they got a right to do what they want. It's their channel, but it's a shame that the actions of one guy has to take the viewing pleasure away from millions of people. And Ben Jones also went on on Facebook and stated, that flag on the top of the General Lee made a statement that the values of the rural South were the values of courage and family and good times. Our beloved symbol is now being attacked in a wave of political correctness that is unprecedented in our nation of free speech and free expression. Activists and politicians are vilifying Southern culture and our heritage as being bigoted and racist. We know that this is not the case. And we know that in Hazard County, there was never any racism. Though the flag has been removed from places such as Walmart, Target, and Amazon, it will never be removed from any of our Cooters stores and museums. We are all the same good people today that we were last week and last year, and we are not going to be shamed into turning our backs on our heritage and our convictions. We are not racists. We despise racism and bigotry. And we think that the people who are creating this culture cleansing are the real bigots in this story. Cooters is going to continue to sell our southern symbols as long as there is a Cooters. I will fight these people until hell freezes over and then I will fight them on ice. It wasn't just the cast members who spoke out about this, but there was also a lot of fans who created and signed petitions online to bring back the Dukes of Hazard. But sadly, Warner Brothers and TV Land didn't listen to the people. 
With the show now censored and also all the memorabilia discontinued, this was when the Dukes of Hazard entered a dark era. There was pretty much only two places you could get your hands on Dukes of Hazard DVDs and memorabilia. It was eBay and Cooter's Place. eBay was flooded with Dukes of Hazard memorabilia being resold, but due to the cancellation of Dukes, the value of these items had now skyrocketed. However, Cooter's Place did still remain to be well stocked on all things both Rebel Flag and Dukes of Hazard. However, the one thing that everybody wanted was no longer being made, and that was of course the General Lee cars. You see, during this era, collectors were desperate to find General Lees. The market was dry, and the ones that were available for sale were on average double or triple their original prices from just a year prior. It was very hard to find anything General Lee during this period. Again, this was a very dark era for the Dukes of Hazard, And to my knowledge, there wasn't any major Dukes events during 2015 and 2016 either. But the fans were still flooding into the two Cooters Place locations in Gatlinburg and also Nashville. And you know what? In fact, they actually opened a third Cooters Place location in 2015 in Sperryville. And this location wasn't too far away from the original Cooters store that started it all. So besides the grand opening of the third Cooters Place store in Sperryville, there was no other Dukes of Hazard events to my knowledge. And chances are, it probably had a lot to do with them trying to let the controversy pass by, and then once it was all said and done and out of the way, they could have a big event and kick off a new era of Dukes of Hazard events. Now if I had to put a date on the post-cancellation revival of the Dukes of Hazard, I would personally say it started around December 4th, 2016 when the 2017 Detroit Autorama was announced. In that announcement, they stated that the Northeast Ohio Dukes were expected to jump the General Lee right outside of the Kobo Convention Center to kick off the weekend alongside having both Tom Wopat and Katherine Bach in attendance. The Huntington Place, formerly known as the Kobo Center, is located Riverside in downtown Detroit, Michigan. The General Lee Jump would take place right outside the venue on Atwater Street. Now the 2017 Detroit Autorama was also my personal introduction to the Dukes of Hazard event world, so it holds a special spot in my heart. My dad and I went downtown for it and we ended up front row for the jump, standing right by the ramp. And this jump was a huge deal. There were a ton of people at the end of Atwater Street. They filled the sidewalk all around Kobo and they were even inside the Kobo Center. People were crowded around the windows just to witness this jump. If I had to guess, there was probably 10,000 people watching as that car took to the sky. Every single news station in Detroit was there documenting it. Fox 2 News, Channel 7, M Live, Detroit News, the Detroit Free Press. The jump even made national headlines and sparked a massive interest in the Dukes of Hazard all over again. And before that jump, almost no TV stations had even shown the General Lee, especially in its full Confederate uniform. The jump was captured from pretty much every angle possible too, so clips were everywhere online. The Dukes of Hazard was back in the national spotlight yet again, despite it having been two years since the reruns had been shown on television. And it wasn't but three months later and Cooter's Place in Sperryville was so busy that they actually had to move to a larger location, and so they reopened in Luray, Virginia, May 2017. This new store had a massive field surrounding it, and this would give them plenty of room for events. This is when Ben Jones and Alma announced a big event, Cooter's Last Stand. It was going to be one final big gathering for cast members and fans, and it was going to revisit that Dukes Fest feel. It's estimated that over 20,000 people showed up to Cooter's Last Stand, and there was at least 100 General Lees in attendance. It was massive to say the least, and it was around this time when the Dukes of Hazard events came back in full force after the cancellation. In late 2017, John Schneider and his wife Alicia had announced the very first Bose Extravaganza. Now, Bose Extravaganza was going to take place in April 2018 at John Schneider Studios in Holden, Louisiana. The event took place in April because it was intended to celebrate John Schneider's birthday. Bose Extravaganza would be a mixture of everything fans loved about Duke's Fest, only there would be more. There would be General Lee hood slide competitions, a car show, and some big stars came out to perform a one-of-a-kind concert. Most notably was Kid Rock in 2019. 
and Kid Rock was a perfect fit to play a Dukes of Hazard event because he had been very vocal in supporting the Dukes of Hazard after the cancellation. In fact, Kid Rock actually hosted his own hood slide competition and I got to compete. John Schneider even showed up to host it. That was back in 2018 at Kid Rock's Fish Fry. But going back to Bo's Extravaganza, at Bo's Extravaganza you were even given the opportunity to be an extra in one of John Schneider's feature films. But here's the real kicker. But then Alicia and I started to do, it wasn't Duke's Fest, it was Bo's Extravaganza. So we did Bo's Extravaganza here at the studio, and I believe we did five of them. Yep. Uh, they're in April for my birthday. Honestly, I'm not sure that I'm going to do it again this year. This year has been a... Uh, it's been a rough year, uh, and I'm not quite certain that I'm ready to do that because it's a it's a pretty big undertaking to oh, get yeah. that event going. But while we were here, while we did it here, we had uh, we had Kix Brooks, we had the Bellamy Brothers, we had Kid Rock. I mean, we we did a lot of a lot. I know, I see. Yep. We did a lot of uh, a lot of great stuff here. Um, of course, my band played every year. We had a we had a, a really big time. Uh, we jumped cars. We did stand on at the movie. Yes, we did poker your, run the movie. You made your did all of that stuff. Debut. Well, my jumping debut anyway. <laughs> yes, yeah, very true. Yeah, my jumping debut. What made that you was in. Uh, I wanted to do it always, but <laughs> studios wouldn't let me. I'm the only one dumb enough to let me jump a car. <laughs> <laughs> and Jamie Smith built it for you, correct? He did. He did. He built the General Lee. Uh, but for Stand On It and Poker Run, my uh, uh, my father-in-law and I cut the T-tops. Actually, he cut the T-tops in the first Challenger for Stand On It. And then a buddy of mine, uh, Kevin Walton, built the car for Poker Run, which is a really nice one. Beautiful car. All in all, Bose Extravaganza had a solid run of five epic years of unique hazard-styled fun. The last Bose Extravaganza was in 2022, and it sure ended with a bang. Not only did Bo, Luke, and cousin Koi Duke get to reunite with Lee One, the very first General Lee, but they also got to witness John Schneider set a personal record for his longest car jump to date. Schneider jumped a Hellcat over 150 feet, and that had to have been a wild sight to see. 2019. It was the 40th anniversary of the Dukes of Hazard, and the year started out with a massive reunion. All the cast members reunited in Nashville to celebrate 40 years of the Dukes of Hazard at the Music City Event Center located behind Cooter's Place. At the Music City Event Center, that's where they had all the autograph lines and also photo opportunities with all the cast members in one photo. Then there was also a big viewing party on January 26th at the Texas Troubadour Theater. Fans and cast members gathered as one to play a few rounds of trivia hosted by Dukes of Hazard collector Larry Franks. Then at exactly 9 o'clock p.m., everybody sat back and watched One Arm Bandits together in the theater, marking exactly 40 years since the show had originally aired. It was a very special event. Also in 2019, there was some massive progress getting Dukes of Hazard collector cars back on the market. When Warner Bros. pulled the licensing for Dukes of Hazard memorabilia, it hurt a lot of companies including Johnny Lightning, Ertl, and Auto World. Those three companies had been making General Lees and other Dukes of Hazard cars for years up until Warner Bros. pulled their licensing in 2015. So in 2019, Johnny Lightning began pushing the limits to see what they could and couldn't get away with. They released a new car in their Barn Finds Lost Legends series, Oh One Can Imagine. This car was initially sold in a big package with a resin barn that came with it, and even though it wasn't branded as a General Lee, it was undoubtedly a General Lee, or as close as we were going to get anyways. On the door, there is very clear remnants of an O1 on the side. The car also has vector wheels, and the push bar is identical to what we saw on the original Johnny Lightning General Lees. They knew Dukes fans were hungry for anything General Lee, and so they gave us the O1 one can imagine 69 Charger. They would later go on to release a clean version of the car called the Country Charger, and many resellers use these to make custom General Lees with, which is super cool of them, but that's not all. Cooter's Place somehow struck a deal with Greenlight in 2019 and got them to start making some hobby exclusive cars for them. These cars would be made out of car models that Greenlight was already using in some of their other lines like Hot Pursuit or their tow truck line, 
but these particular cars would be different. These particular cars would have hazardous branding on them. So in other words, they began making cars such as the Hazard Police Cars, Chickasaw County Police Cars, Daisy's Jeeps, Cooter's Tow Trucks, the Double Zero Mustang, and so many other cars that we saw and loved on the Dukes of Hazard. Now, I don't know the logistics of how they managed to work around not having licensing to make these cars. And for all I know, maybe they do. But I do know enough to know that Warner Bros. doesn't have any involvement as far as I could see. And I feel like if they did, there would be some sort of marking on the package that indicates their presence, like a trademark. These new cars being made by Greenlight are not officially being sold as Dukes of Hazard cars. The packages are being branded almost as if they're commons like Monaco or Mustang. If Warner Brothers had any involvement, I would assume that they'd be branded as Dukes of Hazard cars. But regardless of how they managed to pull it off, us Dukes fans were extremely thankful for it and I feel like we owe it all to Cooter's Place for getting this done. And also Greenlight as well for being willing to make these cars. There are so many Dukes of Hazard cars available on the Cooter's Place website and in fact they have even brought back the 118th General Lees that Auto World used to make. They did this in the form of the Cooter's Garage exclusive 1969 Dodge Charger. It comes with a General Lee decal kit that can be easily applied to the cars. And compared to the prices of some of the original Auto World General Lees, this one is by far way more affordable. And it's very common to find it on sale at Cooter's Place. It makes me so happy to see that Cooter's Place found a way to work around Warner Brothers and get some form of Dukes of Hazard memorabilia on the shelves for the fans. Because having this memorabilia available and in the public eye is what is going to keep the Dukes of Hazard alive for another 45 years. So that pretty much brings us to present day. In recent years, we've had other events that have gone on, such as Bo's Extravaganza down in Louisiana. There was Good Old Boys Fest in Virginia, Hazard Fest in East Tennessee, the Hazard Run, which takes place in Luray, Virginia every year. And also there was Hazard Homecoming, which took place in Covington, Georgia for a few years. But as of January 30th, 2024, there's only one Dukes of Hazard event that is happening in the United States and that is the 25th anniversary of Cooter's Place. The event is set to happen the weekend of July 19th through the 21st at the Cooter's Place store in Luray, Virginia. As of right now, there are several cast members that are confirmed to be going to the event, including Daisy, Luke, Cousin Coy, Deputy Cletus, Huey Hogg, and more to be announced. Way Jennings is also going to be putting on a concert there, and the event will be free admission, which is pretty cool. I will be there as long as my old Ford takes me down there. I'll be there filming with the camera and I hope to see you there as well. Now for my Canadian viewers, there's actually a Dukes of Hazard event coming near you. The Northeast Ohio Dukes are going to be jumping the General Lee in Moncton, New Brunswick on April 19th for the 50th annual Radical Speed Sport Expo. This will be the first international General Lee jump ever. So it's going to be pretty sweet. You don't want to miss out. But as of right now, that's all the Dukes of Hazard events that have been announced for 2024. But the year is still young. Who knows what could come up next? Stay tuned to my social medias, my Facebook, my Instagram, and my YouTube community page as I'll be sharing more information as the year goes on. Now, even though there might not be a lot of Dukes of Hazard events this year, probably in part due to the terrible economy we're experiencing right now, let's go Brandon, the Dukes of Hazard remains an iconic part of American pop culture. And even though it hasn't been shown on TV in almost 10 years now, crazy to think about, the heart and soul of the show is still very much so alive and well, and the legacy of the Dukes of Hazard will live on forever through the fans. I hope you guys enjoyed this two-part documentary, The Dukes of Hazard, 45 years later. This project was a huge undertaking for me to make, especially with the time crunch that I had. I'd like to give some massive thank yous right here to John Schneider for doing the interview with me, to my friends John Holland, Jack Garrett, Raymond Kahn, Milton Dacus Jr., Pete Coaches, all you guys who I've reached out to for questions and you guys have provided me with the answers. You guys played a huge role in making this video happen and thank you to all the fans who sent in any photos for me to use in the video. I tried
tried to use what I could. I'm sorry if I didn't get the chance to use your photos, but stay tuned to the channel because they might just pop up in one in the near future. I really hope you guys enjoyed this. Thank you so, so much for watching. But with all that said and out of the way, <sighs> take a deep breath now. I am ChunkyMonkey40 at YouTube.com. Cheers and stay rebel, y'all. Just some good old boys. Never meaning no harm. It beats all you ever saw. Been in trouble with the law since the day they was born. They straighten them curves. They flatten them heels. Well, someday the mountain might get them, but the law never will. Making their way.